Welcome to Das Geek. I am very excited about this video, although apparently all of you already know about this, but me, the, the new Linux guy that you guys just failed to tell me this exists. So in my video, Das Keyboard 5Q, I was talking about the fact that Das Keyboard was working on supporting Linux and they had released a dev file for the drivers and software you need to utilize this keyboard which is very cool that they're out there looking to support Linux. And it just shows how many manufacturers are coming on board the Linux train right now in a big way, because it's just such a growing market that goes untapped. And well, there's just an exodus from other operating systems. And I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of exodus coming a lot from the Mac community too, um, be based on all the news, even though it was a pro and meant for professionals. That whole thing, uh, the recent launch of their products is kind of a joke. A $999 stand. Really, Apple? Really? Really? <laughs> anyway, so apparently you guys knew about this, but this is a program called Alien. And what Alien does is it converts programs between different package managers. So when you think about a universal package solution like a Snap or an app image, these allow you, no matter what distribution that you're in with some variants there, but for the most part, all your main hardcore distributions that support snaps, flat packs, app images, and things, you can use this program in any distro that you choose. So if I want to run a snap in Ubuntu, I can. I can also set up snaps to run in, say, OpenSUSE or Arch or other distros so that the person creating it doesn't have to keep creating it for all the various flavors of Linux. Well, Alien is an amazing program that's been out for a while. It looks like at some point here that the original maintainer stopped maintaining it about four years and four months ago, but it was picked up by Kyle Berry here, which I'm very glad that he did pick this up because while universal packages are an option, they're not a solution for every type of application out there. And some people have take issue with certain things about the universal packaging systems whether it be they're too slow or certain security issues and things like that. So sometimes you just want a program to run natively. You want to convert it between a dev file to an RPM or to a DPKG file or TJZ file format, Slackware TJZ file format, and all of these various ways that it can convert between all of these different file formats. So I did this with the DOS keyboard. I took the RPM file that they had and I converted it to a deb file or a deb file and convert it to an RPM file. And I'm going to show you those steps of me actually doing that. So you can see that at the end of this video and lo and behold, I was able to use the DOS keyboard software within OpenSUSE, even though it's a deb file. So this is an amazing tool. Now it doesn't work all the time. So sometimes they're missing libraries and other things that you're going to have to go find but it certainly worked without any additional um, libraries missing or anything else for the DOS keyboard, for instance. So it was very simple to do, and I was able to get that software working in the distro and platform that I want to utilize, which makes it such an awesome tool. The other thing is it's super fast and very efficient code. It's not something where you're gonna have to do too much voodoo here to figure out. In fact, on the DOS Geek community website under the um, brain dump, there will be a link to my OpenSUSE tips and tricks. Of course, this you could use this for Fedora or any other distro of your choice. In here, I have an example of how to install a package and I use the DOS keyboard file um, here as the example that you can use to convert between the Debian and RPM. And you could obviously change this for any software that you're wanting to do that with. Um, just change out the package name here. And again, I'll show you those steps at the end of this video. But I also need to give a special shout out to the community. Um, Morrow, which I think is how his name is pronounced, was hit me up on Mastodon. And we were talking about OpenSUSE and things. And I was saying, I love everything. I've gotten everything to work. It's been very stable so far. You know, I'm comparing it to Arch, which is another rolling distro that you all know I love. By the way, I use Arch. Um, so you know, I was talking about the one thing I can't get to work is Lightworks. Now, Lightworks is proprietary software, so it's not really something I can go out there and be like, come on, make this proprietary thing work in Linux. But, you know, Lightworks is important to me. The rendering times, for instance, when I do this video here, 
um, I have short periods of times where I can record a video and I try to get content as often out to the community as possible. Uh, but rendering times, if I do a 30 minute video in Caden Live, my which I love Caden Live, but my rendering times will probably be 40, 50 minutes or an hour that I have to wait. Then I have to upload it to YouTube and wait for that upload to finish. Then I have to put in all the information that YouTube requires, you know, titles, information, keywords, social media contact, all of that stuff. And then I have to wait for YouTube to finish processing it so that it actually shows up in 1080p because if you quit publish right away, it's going to show up in like 720 or 480, which makes it look horrible and all of these things. So when I use something like Lightworks, I can render that file if it's a 20, 30 minute video and usually half or less of the time of the full video. So if it's a 20 minute video. It usually takes me nine to 10 minutes to render instead of more time than the actual video is. And that's why I needed Lightworks to save me time if I wanted to really do videos and shoot things within OpenSUSE without having to move the file to a folder, community folder, then you know switch back to, or a network folder, and then switch back to another distro that has Lightworks on it and it works. And Lightworks worked in Fedora, it works in, um, and they're very good at supporting Linux. Hopefully one day they'll go the open source route. Um, but you know, it works in Fedora, works in Ubuntu, works in Arch. So I knew the solution was out there, but I couldn't figure it out. I'd spent days trying to figure it out. Mauro here goes in there and he says, Hey, I, I got this for you. The next day he has the solution, sends it to me. I've put that out here on the, um, on, out on my website here for anyone who wants to, and has run into this issue to work. I, there were similar steps to this that I was following on other web pages where other issue, other users had issues getting Lightworks to work in OpenSUSE, but this one worked. And the other ones, either I wasn't following them correctly or something else, but it looks like he took some hints from different websites that are listed here uh, to figure it out, but just brilliant job and complete random kindness out there from the Linux community. That's what you all have given me from the very beginning, whether it's my time on Destination Linux podcast, uh, my time here on the DOS Geek channel when I first switched to Linux, the absolute incredible kindness is unbelievable. To give you another example of that, OpenSUSE team, I had an issue with a piece of hardware. I've got a brand new monitor. By the way, I'm recording this in a completely uh, different resolution, a 2K resolution. So it'll be interesting for you to leave your comments below and let me know how it looks because I wasn't quite sure what YouTube's gonna do with it. I know they do some processing on their end um, to lower it down and may automatically detect that you're on 1080. And so it will adjust the resolution appropriate. Let me know if you just see big black bars on the edges or something of the video. But in any case, I got this new monitor and was having issues getting FreeSync set up and posted it on OpenSUSE forum. An individual on there literally spent the entire day. I mean, within 10 minutes of me posting, you know, some of the outputs and files and things that we were seeing to try to get FreeSync to work from this monitor to my machine. But just the fact that a complete stranger uh, knows me from Adam, sits there all day long to try to help fix this for another complete stranger, just absolute kindness in the Linux community. You would not get that anywhere else. You just would not get that kind of support, especially for free uh, anywhere else. So special shout out to the OpenSUSE team for having great forums and admins there. Thank you to the community for all the love and support you get. Let's get into showing you Alien in action. Definitely go check this out. Let me know if you already knew about Alien and just decided not to tell me too. Ridiculous. That I'm mad about community. Until next time, get up there and fill your brains. All right, thanks to those who stuck around here. So you're seeing I'm going into the downloads file because I've already downloaded the dev file that I want to convert. In this case, it's the dev file for the DOS keyboard. So I'm going into my downloads. You see that dev file there, which I downloaded right off of their website. And again, you could replace this with any dev file that you're wanting to convert. So now I'm going to go to my page, show you how to use the DOS Geek community page here. And you see the command sudo space alien tech r tech c tech v. Um, to convert this to an RPM file. And of course, once you install Alien, you can look at the man pages to see the various types of uh, conversions you can do. All of this through the 
fast forwarding and video magic. That RPM was generated super fast. Um, and now we're just going to use the RPM tech I to install it. And then I will be able to use my DOS keyboard, which only has a dev file in an RPM based, uh, distro like OpenSUSE or Fedora. How cool is that? Amazing stuff. Thank you so much for watching.